Nathan, how are you doing today, man? Really good, Tony. Good to see you again. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, sir. We're here today to have a chat about your experience with migrating emails. How's that been for you? Uh, recently, it's been something that we've been very busy with, um, but it's actually really simple and easy. We've got BitTitan in there, we've been using it since 2013, and it's one of those ones that when you ask me whether I wanted to sit down and catch up with you around it, it's a bit of a secret that's been in our tool chest for quite some time, but it's an amazing tool that allows us to uh, migrate quickly and easily. Right. So if we step back a bit and have a look at how you did it back prior to 2013 and using BitTitan migration, what did that process look like? So back in the, uh, the good old days. Back in the good old days, <laughs> yeah. So back in the good old days, um, when we first started going up to BPOS, we had to extract PST files, set the mailboxes up, import the PST files, and then try and hunt for all the data that was missing because PSTs had certain size limitations, uh, they had format limitations, and they really just liked to get corrupted. So it was really it was a nightmare. It was a long process. And I believe we did only two or three migrations into Microsoft BPOS before we had to find a better way. So what made us certain that BitTitan was for us is that when we first connected it, it would have been simple and easy. Connect to the Exchange server, connect to BPOS or 365. Um, the documentation we found when we needed has always been really good as well. And then we'd hit go and it would do a seed load, it would start migrating the data for us and we could continue doing other jobs and other tasks while it set up and loaded. And now that we can actually use the desktop side migration, it does Outlook for you as well. So we deploy it with our RMM and we walk away. The job's done all by migration. That sounds too easy, man. It is too easy. That's why I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> now, it's quite interesting because when, when you first load it up, what it does, it takes an inventory of all the email assets that you have, right? From uh, the items you have, the calendar items, and it goes, okay, I'm going to be moving, let's say, 3,000 items. And it does each item separately. It does. And, it, and it logs it for you, so you're, you're not scared that you're going to miss something. We've never, we've never missed anything that we're aware of, and it is fully logged, so we do know what's going on. And often we find that clients will tell us on the other side that something's missing, and it could be their, their cache, it could be the fact that it was not in the folder that they thought it was, but we can go into migration list and check that out. And if we really need to, we can press play again and just do a whole migration or, or whatever's missing over. But we don't find that we've got missing data, we find that you know, we've got a really nice process to get it connected, seed the initial data, reconnect the end users and then just see what might have happened while DNS was propagating. Truly seamless. The client goes home, they come back the next day, they open up Outlook, they don't even know they've been moved. And with COVID and what's happening there, we've been seeing a lot of exchange servers and we've actually seen a lot of old SBS servers getting decommissioned really quickly. People who have hung on to these projects and not wanted to go to the cloud, suddenly are really interested in the cloud. So migration was has meant that we can take on more projects because we're able to just connect these servers, begin the migration, and move on to the next job. And the best thing I think about is, I think you can schedule when the uploads happen, so you don't have to take the time away from the business. If you want, don't want to do it in the daytime because people are in the offices or the location, you can do it at after hours for a set duration of time as well, is that correct? 100%. So, you know, when you're taking it off-site and you might have somebody with ADSL or, you know, a lower speed MBN and they're getting rid of that old server, or even if you look at an old SBS server, we were doing a migration only about a week or two ago, and the server couldn't actually handle the load and which, the speed in which BitTitan was trying to pull the data off. So we were able to throttle it, we were able to set it up to run at night, and allow it just to migrate while they weren't working and not have any business impact, but not have any impact to my team either. We're talking about all the other components that Migration Wiz can, can actually migrate as well. I believe they also do SharePoint and they also do OneDrive. So have you used those components also? We have. So, and recently we've even used tenancy to tenancy migration. So it's really nice to get it from when you've got two companies that are merging together and a client acquired another 365 tenancy, we we're able to migrate and merge the tenancy data, so SharePoint, OneDrive. And again, it's really just you set it up, you connect, you map it to the other side and you hit go. All your scheduling still sits there, all of your auditing sits there. Um, so again, my team can take more work on, they can actually do the, the engaging work, the interesting work and not have to just manually migrate data or check that the data that has migrated has come through correctly.